Welcome to Talks at Google. My name is Andrew Rollis, and it's a thrill for me to. Um, hey, Johnny. Hi. It's a thrill for me to host our guest today, jazz pianist and vocalist Johnny O'Neill. And um, a little bit about Johnny. He's originally from Detroit, Michigan, and got to start playing uh, some different kinds of music, gospel and R&B, before turning his attention to jazz. Uh, but he worked as a professional musician from a very young age in Detroit, but also in Birmingham, Alabama, as well as St. Louis. Uh, he caught the attention of some jazz masters at, at a young age, which opened up a lot of doors, people like Barry Harris, as well as Ray Brown. Uh, but Johnny moved to New York City in the early 1980s and uh, performed with Clark Terry. He also joined Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers during that time. In 1985, he performed at Carnegie Hall, opening for one of his idols, Oscar Peterson, playing solo piano. Um, but he left New York City in 1986 and spent the next 25 years living in different places like Atlanta, Georgia, spending time back in his hometown of Detroit, Michigan, and back in St. Louis as well. Um, just a couple more accomplishments. He was inducted into the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame in 1998. That was one of the first jazz hall of fames in the country, I'm told. And uh, in 2004, his career hit new heights. He made it to the silver screen. He was in the movie Ray with Jamie Foxx. Uh, playing the role of Art Tatum, who was one of the greatest pianists of all time, uh, I believe at the recommendation of Oscar Peterson. Uh, but uh, he's been back here in New York City since 2010, and he has uh, you know, what are called residencies or recurring uh, gigs at, at different clubs throughout the city. Um, one is Smoke, Jazz, and Supper Club on 106th and Broadway. Uh, his new album's called In the Moment. It's on the Smoke Sessions label. And uh, quickly, just my connection to Johnny, I've been a huge fan since the uh, first time I heard him play at Smoke about five years ago. I was just completely overwhelmed. Uh, and I should also mention that my friend Damon Smith is the associate producer of Johnny's new album. And together with producer Paul Stash, they found a way to make this event happen. So I'm very thankful. Uh, so welcome. Well, welcome. Thank you. So again, the name of the new album is called In the Moment. In the Moment. Yes, and we we for a while we had thought about the title of and you know this new recording. Actually, it's Paul Stash's idea to come up with In the Moment. I think I had a couple of different uh, titles. I believe it was First uh, Tropical Breeze, uh, Being in Love with You, but In the Moment was the best solution for it because that's the way. I like to perform is in the moment. I think we all like to do things in the moment. We don't want to plan everything we do, you know. Had to be spared a moment. You tend to have a little more uh, love and excitement for it when it's in the moment, you know. Bam! <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so. Yeah, so it's very um, representative of, of your sense. And also, yeah. it wasn't really planned. Actually, the repertoire wasn't really planned that what we were going to play um, as my guys could tell you, we went in the studio. I mean, I had songs in mind that I wanted to play, but as the session went on, then I would just add more tunes right in the moment that we hadn't talked about playing. Is that not right, guys? No. Yeah. I heard Ben speaking before about uh, <laughs> learning a tune the day before, or right, right there on the they spot. He tell me, I always yeah. put him on the spot. He tell me, at times, he said, Johnny, we've never played this tune before, really. I thought we have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you keep them on, on their toes. Well, they keep me on my toes as well. The future belongs to the youth. I strongly believe that. It's a reciprocal kind of admiration you have for the young people. And the reason I feel that way is because I was tremendously blessed when I was young, fortunate enough to play with the masters, the Dizzy Gillespie, Milt Jackson, Blakey's, so when all these art, young artists play with me, they play with all my experience. They play with all the great masters that I was graced to play with, you see. Yeah, and that's, and I, <clears throat> it's my destiny to keep this music alive. No America, no jazz. It's the only true art form. And jazz musicians can go anywhere in the world where other musicians can't go, because this is our only true art form. The highest level of performance on a musical instrument. That's right. And I know you've been traveling a lot oh, yes. uh, recently. Uh, t tell us about some of the places you've been to. Well, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, just this year we've been in New York twice. Um, 
We went to um, Israel, Russia, Nice. Where else, guys? Detroit. Detroit. Yes. Uh, How was that coming back to your hometown? Oh, it had. It's been had been about five, three or four years since I played there. So they really welcomed me back home, and and having these wonderful young gentlemen represent me there was great. Thank. You. Give them a nice hand. Actually, traveled quite a bit, um, and I guess both of the guys and I've been in the band a year now. A year for you, and what's how long for you, Etai? Almost a year. And they're wonderful, man. I've and it's so blessed to just see their faces in Europe, and seeing all those audiences, concert houses, audiences just so in in awe with with the young talent more so than myself. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. So um, I know we were talking a little bit before about some of the pianists that have uh, influenced you, and I know you're able to uh, incorporate uh, so many different styles and, and make them your own. And um, I, I was thinking maybe we could go over to the piano and you could okay, sure, demonstrate yeah. some, some of those people that, uh, yeah, that have influenced you. <clears throat> well, first for starters, I, uh, I started out playing gospel, and I would have to give all the praise and glory to the great Retha Franklin. She was actually the first one I heard play gospel piano. And so I would like to demonstrate a little bit of her style. When I first heard this rhythmic style with no bass rhythm section, just piano, and just hear the rhythm. This is a gospel hymn entitled, While the Blood is Running Warm in Your Veins. Here it is. And they also, they use this as the rhythm. You can hear the pedal. Tatum, I, I know he was one of the greatest of all, all time, and he was able to play a lot. Well, of, uh, I will play. Okay, well, things, I can't play like Art Tatum, but I try to conceptually think like him, which I'm still trying to figure it out. It's endless. Okay, well, actually, in the movie he mentioned earlier, I played four songs, but only one tune made it to the silver screen, which is a Jerome Kearns "Yesterday." So here it is. I, you'll never hear this version again. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but it's in influenced by the great Art Tatum. Also with the eye, you know the whole, remember the photos where he had one eye? So. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, well, should we uh, bring up the, the rest of the band? Absolutely. And, all right, sounds good. On, <laughs> let's welcome. That's Etai Mortier at the drums and cymbals. Ben Rubens on the bass and strings. Okay, I'd like to play um, a composition from my new recording, In the Moment. This is an original composition. This is entitled CGLS. So here it is. I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. One. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Now we're going to play something straight ahead. We're going to swing something right down the middle. I got the world on the string. Ooh, here we go.
This is another composition that was did so well by Whitney Houston. This is called Saving All My Love for You. With a little wasp flavor.
at the end of the day, you don't know what love is until you learn the meaning of the blues. You like the blues? I got the Google blues. Google is all around the world. And we travel. Well, I've played in a lot of cities. And I played in a lots of bands. I played all those places. We did those one night stands. I'm feeling lonely and weary. Cause I got the blues so well, the blues is gonna, it's gonna come and get my ass and drive me down in hell. Well, I keep on traveling. What have I got to lose? Well, I keep on traveling. Unraveling all my blues. When I check in a hotel and can't remember his name, but in all hotels, pretty much the same. You know, all the five stars, not that much. All you care about is sleeping in. I lay down on the mattress, pray my soul to keep that the blues don't come and get me and knock me off my feet. But I keep on traveling. What have I got to lose? I'd like to uh, now um, play a beautiful tune that I believe is, is it on recording? I'm, I'm trying to think of the solo pieces I record. What tune did I play? When did I play? Solo? Yeah. Close to around the world. Oh, okay. So here, this is from the <laughs> CD. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. Great. To, I think it's, who know the composer of that tune? 
folks who live on the hill. Like, is it uh, Har Harold Arlen? I think so. I believe that's the boat. Let's see. Looks like this guy's going to look. Ask, ask Google. Yes, I asked Google. Yeah. <laughs> what beautiful song. I love, I've always loved this tune. I'm just going to play a chorus. People make the world go round. So here it is. We hope you've enjoyed this. I think perhaps that's our last tune. This is also on my latest recording in the moment. So if you want to continue to listen to us, I'd be happy to sign and autograph this recordings. Do we have recordings here? I don't know. Do we? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I want to thank Google for taking the time out to have us come and perform for you all, and it's really wonderful. I love it. I'm going to come here every day and hang out. I like this place.
We'll do. Uh, let's do some Q and A. We'll say that again. We're going to do some uh, question and answers. Okay. All right. So, uh, everyone, if you have every questions ready, just please line up to the uh, the mic in the aisle here. You have a wonderful audience. It was very inspirational to play for today. Thank you so much. Wow. Give yourselves a nice hand. Oh. I haven't gotten warmed up yet. I'm still trying to get myself in shape. <laughs> OK. All right, thank you. That was just amazing. Thank you so much. All right. Pleasure to be here. All right, we have first question. Sure, hi, thank you so much for coming. All right. um, my question is just about how you discovered the piano. Was it the instrument you always knew you wanted to play? What was that? Well, that's a good question. Uh, the first time actually I was introduced to the piano, uh, I was at the age of 13, believe it or not. I heard my father play um, at a house party. And we didn't have a piano. He had so many kids, he had to get a day job. He couldn't make money playing music. So. Anyway, we didn't have, yeah, I said it. <laughs> I said it. So we went to a house party and I heard my dad play. Let me, let me, let me just tell you, let me just demonstrate what I heard my father play the first time. And I was so blown away at 13 years old. You can imagine sitting at the, watching this. This was the first, time I heard my father play, and I heard him play this verbatim. And when he started doing the roll, and I said, what the world is that? I'm going to show you the one that really got it. He went. Then he went on with the Lord Register. This is what you call it, an act. I knew then I was sold on wanting to play the piano. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was uh, Erskine Hawkins, right? Erskine Hawkins, uh, after, after hours, hours. right. Yeah. OK. Next question, please. Thanks for uh, uh, sharing your influences with us earlier. earlier. Uh, this is uh, the centenary or centennial of, of some famous jazz musicians, one of whom is uh, Thelonious Monk. Right. And I don't know if you'd be willing to you know, uh, demonstrate uh, some of his stylistic playing, but, okay. but also I, you have a very personal connection to him. I wonder if you could share that. Well, actually, us. my very first visit to New York was actually January of 79. Uh, previous to that, I had just met Barry Harris, and, um, and Barry said, when you come to New York, I have a surprise for you, but he wouldn't tell me who it was. So finally, I went to New York. I drove there, actually. Trying to find him was just impossible. It took me three hours to try to find him, but he was there waiting for me. So I picked him up. We drove over to Jersey. He said, Thelonious Monk, I want you to hear this young man play the piano. First visit, first time, we sat and played all day long at, in this living room, overlooking a beautiful palatial view of the Hudson River. It was fantastic. Yeah, so, and also, we share the same birthday. Who's that just asked? Oh, yeah, OK. That does that answer your question? You want me to demonstrate something a little bit of Monk? OK, let me just have a course of. No, you know, Monk, no one else had been able to really duplicate that sound, because sitting there watching him play the piano, was, it was so amazing to just see how he sat and he played. And he didn't curl his fingers. You know, uh, he, uh, Fall out on the beat. Let me stop. That's enough. <laughs> I got out of that. Okay. Do you remember uh, what he played for you? At Ruby, my had? dear, um, Pananica. He played all kinds of, um, oh man, he played, 
played a lot. And I just sat there and watched him. I was like in amaze. Um, seeing, see, that's why, you know, technique, people always think the technique is, is just how fast, is how you articulate what you do is what sound. Monk was a perfect example. He didn't, he didn't sound real technical, but what he did was highly technical. So it was hard to, to duplicate what he played. And all his intricate voices, his, I guess what you would call tritones, his substitution, no one's been ever to be able to come up to that level. You know, I don't think, my, my humble opinion, yes. He had flawless technique. At one time, I heard an early recording of him where someone played a, blind, played a trick on me. They said, Johnny, who is this playing? I'm listening. I said, well, no, it's Teddy Wilson. No, that's Art Tatum. I'm just going on with the high-level piano players as far as facilities. He said, no, that's Delonious Monk. I was shocked. He could play like that at one time. You know, he, so he was, I mean, he was a great, one of the greatest composers of the 20th century. I think so. You know, and, and you can, just can't, you have to know his music. You know, you can't sit there and shout through his music. You fall in the ditch and can't get out. <laughs> really, really, it's happened to me many times. Did he have any advice for you? Pardon? Did uh, Thelonious have any advice for you? Well, he, t well, he told me that I have a, a magic touch. He said, you know, I'm a world-class piano player. That's what he said. And keep continue doing what I'm doing and, you know, that was great. At that time, I was really young. I didn't really think of it. But I'm really blessed now, much older now, and for him to say that, and that's what keeps my humility in check, you know, yeah. When I think about all the great ones that came before me, people call me great, call me a king. No, 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 no. I'm a student just like today. As soon as I got up from this great Steinway, it said to me, that's all you got, Johnny, left? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, yes, the perfection is steady growth. You're always reaching and striving to be better. You know, that's for me every time I sit down as a learning experience for me, absolutely. I'm sure all you all being creative and, and networking and all, there's always something. You can't feel like you have arrived. Then you won't grow, you know? That's great advice. Thank you, all right. Do we have any other questions? Don't be scared, <laughs> as they would say. Yeah, please use the mic, yeah. Um. You all can free to ask my gentlemen questions too as well because we do clinics and all over the world and People tend to interview sometimes my youngsters. Yeah. Hi. They have a lot they want to see. Yes. Oh, sorry. Hi. Um, yes. I was just curious, um, how many <coughs> takes do you, do you typically do for the album when you're recording, and when do you know when you finish? How many takes? Yeah. No more than, no, 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 more, no more than two. Usually the first take usually is the best ones. The thing about recording, of course you're never going to feel satisfied um, so as long as it feels good and it sounds good, then you can live with it, then it's okay. You know, people go in the studio and, and take one tune and do 10 takes. You're milking it. How are you going to get something out of that tune? So I think one or two takes are the best. It's best to record. Don't listen to it right away. Play a couple of songs, then go back and listen to it. Because if you listen to it once, you're going to go, oh, I don't like that. Let's do it over again. No, no, let it, let it, let it pass. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, let it pass. And go back and listen. And then, like I said, if it feels right, then it's okay. That's some of the greatest records were all recorded in one room. They didn't have all these sound booths and all that back then. Everybody in one room. A lot of times, one take. Let's play a... Uh, 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 Along came Betty, one take. Out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Is there are there any musicians out there as well sitting out there? Okay. All right. Yes. Oh, I thought I saw someone. So, how do you pick your tunes that you play? You say, how do you, how do you pick, pick your tunes? Ooh, how do I pick my tunes? There are so many. Well, you hey, know, you should mention how, I mean, how many tunes are in your repertoire? Well, I mean, it, well, it, that varies. It depends on the personnel. Um, I think perhaps with this trio, maybe we have 200 songs in the book, maybe, something like that. But the last list, uh, the, the last count, 
after all the songs I accumulated at one time, I had a song list of about 1,587 songs. So, wow. But you know, that's not a lot of tunes when you think of the Great, great American Songbook. That's, Ella Fitzgerald had a repertoire, I was told, Ed Thickpen said, Ella Fitzgerald had a repertoire of over 5,000 tunes that I know of. <laughs> 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 Plus all the verses, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a, a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of tunes, yeah. And you know, so I, it's so many tunes that I forgot that I know because sometimes I I have tunes in mind that I want to play. As soon as I get on the bandstand, they just kind of escape me, and, and you know, and I never get around to play. I said, "Dog, I should have played that tune last night." That's the way it happens. It's just endless when it comes to repertoire, you know. Do you remember the last tune you added? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't. You have another question? Hi. Um, so you're from Detroit. From and Detroit. Detroit is currently, I lived in Ann Arbor for two years. And okay, Ann Arbor, you know, we call that right down the street. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. um, and Detroit is currently going through sort of like a, you know, revitalization, rebirth, gentrification, if you want to call it. You know, it, it's regrowing, et cetera. Um, and I was wondering sort of if you feel as though jazz and blues, et cetera, have a place in sort of that rebirth of Detroit oh, and that oh, revitalization. Yes. Well, just being there this past summer <clears throat> at the Jazz Festival, yes, Detroit is on a tremendous comeback. And of course, some of your most influential musicians in the world come from Detroit. I'm not trying to sound braggadocious, but that's just <laughs> the truth. I mean, when it comes to all types of music, from Motown to the to the soul music, Detroit, Philly, and Pittsburgh. That's the category of all of your innovators. You have innovators, imitators, and simulators. And those guys was the innovators of all this music. You see, in Kansas City, too, for, number four. Yeah, right. OK. Uh, did that answer your question? Yeah. OK, all right, OK, all right. <laughs> all right, well, Johnny, thank you so much. Well, it was my was pleasure to be here. Experience. And thank all you wonderful people. And my rhythm section. <laughs> um, and special thanks to the talks at Google team, uh, Steinway and Sons also for providing this beautiful piano. And hopefully we'll be back here with more jazz at Google. So thanks, everyone. Thank you.